Welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. I'm down here at the Woodyard today, and to be honest, I'm not looking forward to doing this video. We had a accident yesterday while splitting firewood down here, and I don't want any unnecessary suspense or drama. Everyone's okay. Uh, we made a trip to the emergency room last night. I'll explain all that later on, but everyone's gonna be okay. And one way to look at it, it could have been a lot worse. It was pretty bad, but it could have been worse. And I was debating on even doing this video, and I thought if it could help or prevent anyone else from going through the same thing, I might as well do it. Because all this stuff down here that we do every day is dangerous. It really is. And uh, we got a reminder of that yesterday. But what I'm going to do now... I'm gonna kind of show you everything leading up to the accident. It's kind of a typical video. I was getting ready to split some firewood. Melissa's brother, Lee, and his family, they're in town from Vegas, and they kind of enjoy doing it. Doing it, They don't get to do that kind of stuff in Vegas. So there was myself, Lee, his son, William, Levi, and Melissa's dad, Ed. So let me show you everything leading up to the accident, and then uh, we'll go over what happened. And it was one of those, it was just a freak thing. It really was, but anyway, let's get started. All right, so where I ended that video is uh, right before it happened, and Melissa's dad, Ed, he got uh, hit pretty hard with a piece of wood. 
and I have it on video from the drone and I was able to crop in and see what happened. And then I came down here to the log splitter trying to piece everything together so it doesn't happen again. I'm not gonna show you the video. Uh, some people may wanna see it. Some people might not want to. You don't need to see it. Uh, it was pretty rough to see. And I watched it probably 50 times last night trying to figure out what exactly happened. But from when Ed got hit with a piece of wood, actually when it, it released from the splitter, it hit him and he hit the ground it was a total of 1.3 seconds. That's how fast it happened. Let me show you what happened. All right, so we were using the Wolf Ridge log splitter with the six-way wedge on it. And like any machine, especially a log splitter, you know, you gotta be careful. It says right in the owner's manual, the only one that should be within 10 feet of this machine is the operator. And we all know everybody has people around these all the time. It's just, the fastest and the easiest way to split wood. Now, when using a six-way wedge before or even a four-way, on occasion, I've had a few pieces of wood kind of kick out to the side on one side or the other. And, you know, I've got whacked in the legs a few times. Nothing too bad. I have never had anything fly off the top forward. Well, that happened yesterday. Ed was standing somewhere right over in here, Melissa's dad. Uh, Lee, his son, and William were kind of carrying rounds from here over to the log lift. Everything is just the way it was when we shut it down, with the exception of this big chunk of wood right here. That's what hit Ed. I put it back up on there to kind of figure out what happened. So everything's just the way we left it. We had Ed... William was on that side, Lee was over here, and Levi was putting them on the log lift. I was on the controls. Everything was going good. We were flying through these rounds, and that's kind of what happens. You know, you, you have a machine like this, and it's kind of a guy thing, really. You know how much wood you split last time you were down here in a certain amount of time, and, and you're gonna beat that the next time, but we're actually working safe, but we were working very efficiently, uh, and we were just flying through this pile of rounds. So like I said, Ed was standing right over here and what he was doing, you know, if we had a piece after it fell onto the table or even into the conveyor that was too big, he'd, you know, fling it back over to this side for me to re-split it. And everybody knows when this thing's running, uh, I don't have anyone's hands anywhere near this, you know? Nobody reaches in for anything until the ram is retracting. I'm very particular about that. Uh, a lot of people, when we've been running this splitter, always say, you know, I should let Melissa run the controls or whoever's helping me. Um, I don't like that idea. I'm in charge, I'm responsible for everybody that's down here, and I like to have my hands on the controls if I need to stop something, and I just like keeping my eye on everything that's going on around here. So Ed was standing here, right about where I am, and this piece of wood right here, it just came shooting right, right at him in an instant. I heard a bang, and I was standing over there, of course, and it came up and hit Ed right in the face, in the forehead and on the glasses. So he was probably only about three feet, three feet away, and that chunk of wood was still on its way up. And it happened so fast, but I saw the entire thing in slow motion. It was the weirdest thing. So there were some rounds laying here. Uh, when it hit him, he went down right here. We moved them because it broke his glasses. And you know, later on, Lee and William found one of the lenses. So they moved this stuff out of the way. So he fell down here. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what happened. I mean, it just launched out of there. And so like I said, last night, I looked at the video footage over and over again, and I came down here, and I think I have it figured out. It's basically a one in a million kind of thing, but you know, if you split a million pieces of firewood, it's gonna happen. So when this piece came off the splitter, 
You know, it came up here, hit him right in the head. This end did not hit him. This end did. And if you look right here, it's kind of compressed right there. Looks different than the rest of it. Now this thing approached the ram nice and flat, but it started to stand up. And that it does that quite often. It'll stand up and sometimes it'll just flip back. And you have to be careful of that with your hands. But this time, never had it happen before. It was pressed down like this, right? And that ram was putting pressure on this and pushing the rest of it through the wedge and it just sprung out of there. And this end flipped up in the air and I mean, it was still on its way up. That thing would have went 10 feet. It would have. It's a big, big hunk of wood. And that's what hit him. Now, Ed is in his early 80s, and he's a tough old bird. He is. He has been uh, cutting and splitting firewood for well over 40 years. And surprisingly, it did not knock him out. Uh, it definitely stunned him when it hit him. Like I said, it hit him right here in the head. He had a big gash here down his forehead that was pretty deep and right on the brow of his nose was bleeding really badly. And I think that's from when it hit him, he wears glasses and it drove those glasses into the brow of his nose. And, uh, but it didn't knock him out, I couldn't believe it. We got him up sitting on a log and uh, I called Jeannie, Cliff's wife. Uh, she was an ER nurse forever. So she came right over, checked him out and uh, said she'd probably go to urgent care for sure, he needs stitches. And then she said, you might as well just go to the emergency room at the hospital because uh, with his age, you're definitely going to want to do a scan. He wasn't showing any signs of a concussion. He wasn't feeling lightheaded or anything. I was shocked. So we took him to the ER and they checked him all out. They did a CT scan on his head. His head was okay, but his nose is broken. And I think that's going to require some uh, a surgery to fix that. He's got stitches on the inside, the outside, but uh, he was bleeding pretty bad. I talked to him this morning and uh, he's doing good. He is, uh, I'm sure he's in a lot of pain. He said his side hurts some from when he fell down on those logs, but his head doesn't really hurt. The nose hurts, of course. Uh, so he's gonna have some recovery time. I feel horrible about it. Uh, and that's why I've just been trying to figure out what it was that caused it and how to prevent it from happening again. I have never seen a piece of wood out of all the years of running one of these go out the front like that. Never saw anything like it, uh, but I guess it could happen. So moving forward, I have a few ideas. I mean, it's not like you're gonna quit sp splitting wood. You can't be afraid of it. You just have to respect it. But a few things that I'm gonna do differently. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, just slow down a little bit. Uh, we were moving at a fast pace. I mean, it, it would have happened the same way if we were moving slow, but just slow down a little bit, uh, not get in such a big hurry. Second thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to use the six-way wedge when I have other people down here helping me. Uh, the times that I've seen it kick out to the side happens more often with the six way than it does the four way. So that's something else I'm definitely gonna do, not use that six way wedge. You know, if I'm by myself, I'm gonna use it, but if I have people standing off to the side or out this direction, I'm not gonna use the six way. I only use the six way wedge really uh, for when all the sizes are just about the same. It has to be the perfect size really for the six way and looking at it now, I probably should have been using the four-way yesterday anyway because uh, these were kind of random sizes. That doesn't have anything to do with what happened, but I probably would have been better off with the four-way anyway. The other thing that I'm going to do, uh, I'm not going to have anyone standing over here. You know, occasionally the conveyor will plug up a little bit. If it does... I'll make sure we're not splitting, you know, just kind of push them ahead a little bit, get it, get everything going again, but not be splitting while we do that. And, you know, last night I was going through other videos on YouTube thinking to myself, 
Do other people do this the same way? And everyone splits the same way. And I, it was just a freak thing. I just don't want it to happen again. And, you know, most everyone that doesn't have a conveyor, they always have someone standing right here pulling stuff off, whether they're throwing it in a pile or putting it in the IBC totes. Just, I don't know. It's just one of those things. It was a crazy thing, and uh, I just don't want it to happen again. But between using the four-way, just slowing down a little bit, not having anyone in this area when we're splitting. I think on this side, you're fine loading the log lift, but not anyone standing right by the table. I think that's what we're gonna do from here on out. And to be honest, we just had a lot of people here. It's kind of a shame the way it went down because like Ed hasn't seen his son or grandson in a couple years. They don't make it back this way. It was just a nice afternoon to be down here. Uh, with family splitting some firewood and it ended up in the emergency room so we'll have to see I'll get uh, I'll get Ed when he gets to feeling a little bit better I think he may want to talk about you know everything that went down he called me this morning he said he's ready to get back down to the wood yard I said no you're you're not you need a little break here for a little bit to heal up but uh, he is he's a tough old bird that thing hit him and it's a big chunk of wood. That piece needed re-split again into four more pieces at least. Probably weighed 15 pounds and uh, hit him right in the head. But, but anyway, I want to show you again uh, what happened in case you missed it and try to explain it better. I'm going to use this little piece of wood to show you because this one's just too big to use one hand. This thing was coming through the splitter like this. And then it starts standing up, which it does sometimes. Now, like I said, normally, it'll just flop back. Pretty easy, actually. This time, that ram caught the bottom of it, probably pretty close to the wedge, put it under a bunch of pressure, and it just sprung this way and went up and hit him right in the head. That's what happened. The wood had, uh, it did have a big knot in it, you can see, but that's pretty typical. That thing's huge. I might save that. Ed can burn this one first as soon as it gets cold again. But anyway, I don't know if my little accident investigation uh, will be helpful for any of you. But if you take one thing away from this video, uh, just be careful. You know, all these things we use are very dangerous. And this is a, a fine reminder of that. And uh, take care of yourself and those around you. And I think that's about it. We'll catch you on the next one.